Okay, shalom, shalom. Om yashala, koholo yimla, yahweh, bahashim, yahweh shai, bahashim, rachachachudash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well, that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. We just want to say the water to all the akim, achwa, that's out here sincerely keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of yahweh, bahashim, yahweh shai, to the best of their ability. Yahweh. Let's come in at you with another quick, quick lesson. Pray that it's edifying by the Spirit. And um, yeah, this was a story happened a few days ago. I know the brothers was mentioning it in um, a lesson, but I just so happened to run across it in this article. And um, you know, I didn't didn't know that this this young lady was pregnant, but she stabbed her uh, man to death. You know, or not to death. Well, the way that it happened, I mean, it's kind of crazy, but you know, because she actually stabbed him in the leg and hit an artery. And and killed, you know, he 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 bled out, man. But hey, you know, we we all know that man's goings of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, first off. And matter of fact, let's just get that. Because people think about free will, and there is no such thing as free will. There's no such thing as free will, man. The Lord programs us to do what he wants and needs us to do throughout the day. And that goes off into the book of Job. Um let's get this real quick. Proverbs 20. And 24. Should have went to the other one. It moves a little faster. That KJV, that 1611. It says, man's goings of Yahweh. How can a man then understand his own way? So, even him meeting that woman, that was all designed by the power and spirit of Yahweh, by Shemel was shy. Her meeting him, you know, him impregnating her. And she's about to have a baby, basically, in jail. And then after that, they're going to take that baby. And you know they're going to do that, man. But those are the curses that we are under as a people in this kingdom. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the true Hebrew Israelites, man. That's your biblical nationality. And we are under those curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28, which I want to go into a few of those, because we wasn't obedient. We didn't listen to our Lord. We made a contract with our Lord. We didn't keep our end of it. But he kept all of his. <laughs> the Lord kept his end of the contract, even down to the point of sending us into slavery. Hardcore, rigorous slavery. He said that he was going to do it. That was a part of the contract. I mean, if you sign a contract with any company, that, you know, U.S. wise or any country that you're in. If you sign a contract with a company and, 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 and you say that I'm going to do this. And all the stipulations are in the contract as to what you're supposed to do. If you miss out on one thing in that contract, a person can take you to court and say, well, hey, he didn't do this. You know, say, for instance, you may have a lawn care service or something like that. You might say, well, hey, here's my contract. You know, this is my price, my fee. I'm going to come through. This is what, what was included. You know, I'm going to clean the gutters. You know, I'm going to um, I'm going to power blow the leaves. I'm going to rake the leaves. Um, I'm going to, you know, um, cut the grass. Or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And you cut the grass, but you don't, you know, basically get up the debris. And you just jump in your vehicle after you done got paid and leave. <laughs> that person going to take you to court because that's a part of the contract. And that's what happened, what happened with us as a people, man. We, we made a contract with the Lord. We didn't keep it. But the Lord, like I said, he kept every end of his contract. Because when we was doing what he told us to do. He was giving us the benefits like he said he would. But when we stopped doing what he said to do, he gave us the curses that came along with what he put in the contract. He done nothing wrong. <laughs> it was us. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So let's go back into the story. Pregnant woman and her boyfriend were in a alleged violent relationship. It ended when she fatally stabbed him. Prosecutors say a woman who was eight months pregnant fatally stabbed the father of her child just hours after her baby shower. Um, Keisha Golden was accused of killing the father of her child during an argument at her Austin, Illinois apartment. Notice it says her apartment. And this is why we tell you, Jake, man, if you can at all possible, man, have your own place. Have your own place, man. Because we're in captivity. It's, you know, <laughs> we're in captivity, man. And, and the woman has the upper hand on you in his kingdom. The so-called white man has given the so-called black woman the upper hand over the men. If you can have your own place, get your own place, man. So no woman can put you out of her out of her place. Throw your shit all out on the ground. You know, 
on some waiting to exhale, burning your shit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, have your own stuff, man. Have your own place, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Now, I, you may say, well, hey, all right, you know, two are better than one, and it is. But when it straight comes down to certain situations, man, it, it's best you have your own, man. And in these days and times, it's just best to just leave the nigga woman alone. I mean, uh, I don't mean to sound like that, but it's toxic, man, just in general, man. The so-called white man has, has those curses are so bad on us. The Lord has used the so-called white man to put our women against us so cold to the point where it's just not worth um, housing up like that, man. OK, it says. Damn, and that bond is high as hell. It says she is being held in, in jail on two million dollars bond. God damn. And her next day in court is scheduled for less than two weeks before her baby is due. My goodness. Hey, this Esau, though. You know, Esau don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> Esau don't care about you being pregnant in a jail. Eight months. All the way down to the end of it. You eight months, two weeks. <laughs> you eight months, three weeks. You sitting in a jail cell of Esau, man. In a nasty ass cell, man. It says, Golden is accused of fatally stabbing her boyfriend, Calvin Sidney. During an argument that turned violent, prosecutor said at at a bail hearing that on that the October 22nd incident wasn't the first time an argument between the two had turned violent. Prosecutors say the police were called to Golden's house five times between June and September, June, July, August, September. So they, the, the police have been there at least once to twice a month. <laughs> and that just Jake you gotta bounce man when it's like that man you gotta go ahead and just bounce man I get it you wanna stick around you wanna make things happen but if it's not in the, if, you're, if, you're, if you're not in this truth it's, it's kinda hard man because you're gonna be living off some carnal shit your, your thoughts are gonna be carnal you're gonna do carnal things now when you're in this truth and you li you know you're reading the scriptures and you can apply the scriptures to certain situations like this you know had he been in this truth, you, you already know neither one of them are, you know. But had they been into this truth, this situation wouldn't have turned out like this. Because they could have been able to apply the scriptures. Okay, it says. Damn, they was there five times. Okay, it says. Um, yeah, they was there five times between June and September on um, domestic violence reports. Uh, according to the police in four of those instances, Sydney choked. Punched, slapped, and pushed her. So, you know, he beating up on the pregnant woman, man. So, if, the, if these accusations are true, which is fucked up, but that's a part of those curses. That's a part of those curses. You see, that's what I'm saying. He's into this truth. If you got your seed growing in this woman, you're going to have respect enough for it, man, and not put your fucking hands on her. Get your ass up and walk out of the house. You know, until things cool off. Just go somewhere, man. Shit, go to the bar, have a damn drink real quick or something, whatever. Hell, you know, hey, shit, Jake, damn, I mean, come on, man. It says, according to the, the court report, record, according to the court records and police reports, Golden took out an order of protection against Sydney. So they weren't even supposed to even be around each other, basically. Okay. Sydney didn't, didn't press charges when Golden stabbed him in the neck in July. So she, so she, she's a, she's a, a multiple stabber, man. So you know this bitch will pull a knife and stab you. You you need to be bouncing, man. I'm telling you, in this kingdom, in this captivity, hey, it's best to just say, hey, look, man, I'll take the L, see my baby when I can see him or her when I can, and 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 I'll pay child support and you know get visitation rights, go through the court system, because come on, man, you 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 got multiple domestic violence cases. You, the police keep being called to your damn house. That's a problem. And the neighbors, you know, you, you, that's not something that you want the neighbors to see. It's constantly something going on, man. You know? But damn, she done stabbed the dude in the fucking neck. And who... <laughs> who says, causing him to have to go to the hospital, according to prosecutors. It was just a toxic with those two. Golden's mother, Tarsha Ellis, told the Chicago Sun. And you know damn well how your daughter was. You, you raised her. But they loved each other. That's not love. What the fuck... Love. <laughs> that if you calling that shit love, come on man. If he could raise up right now, they wouldn't have no case because he would never want charges against her. Well, he ain't raising up, and they gonna press charges on her ass, pregnant or not. 
following the baby shower. Now check out why this shit, all this shit went down. Following the baby shower, Golden Sydney and other relatives went to her apartment located, you know, 51 block of West Augusta, Augusta, approximately at 3 a.m. Now motherfuckers should be going to bed and going home and relaxing, man. The couple got into an argument about who could use the microwave to heat leftovers. This is what this shit all started over. Hey, look, eight months pregnant or not, you think that, okay, this is my man. This is what she should be saying to herself. This is my man. You know, I'm about to go and warm up some food. Baby, what you want? I'm gonna warm your plate up first. You know, because that's the way that it should be, even though she's pregnant. Now, somebody might say, well, damn, she's eight months. She on her feet. She was able to be out to 3 a.m. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, what's gonna happen when the baby is, you know, is born and, 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 and what, what, you, what she's supposed to just get this ultimate treatment? Like, come on, man, you know, be the woman of the household, man. But at the same time, too, I can't go on his end. Why the fuck did you just, hey, baby, you know, you've been up all day. You know what I'm saying? Getting everything ready. I know you must be tired. I'm about to go in here and warm something up. I'm going to warm you a plate. Either one of them could have said, I'm going to warm you a plate up first. What you want? You see, that's why I'm saying it's so important to be into these scriptures because just one scripture could have diffused that whole situation. Over a fucking microwave? You fighting over who can get the radiation first. Come on, man. Okay, it says the couple got into an argument about who could use the microwave to heat leftovers. Prosecutors say Golden knocked a plate out of Sydney's hands. So see, now why the fuck would you do some shit like that? You a mean, evil, treacherous ass bitch if you gonna knock a plate out of a nigga hand, man. Come on, bro. It's simple, simple stuff. Simple stuff. You gonna knock a full plate of food out of a nigga's hand? Break the plate, shit all over the place, all over the, probably all over his shoes. <laughs> I mean, over the, I mean, boy, I tell you. Let me grab another scripture real quick, man. Oh, what's that one? Um, yeah, man, you got to be able to control your anger. You got to be able to control yourself out here because people will, uh, will push you to these, these limits, man. Proverbs 16 and 32, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. See that? And you can tell she had anger problems. And you can, I'm, I'm, I, I would have to go with both of them. You know what I'm saying? But come on, man. She, she, done, she done stabbed the dude once, so we know she got an anger problem. She stabbed him again to the point then, you know, and kills this nigga. You slapping plates out of niggas. That's anger, man. That's that's an anger management problem right there, man. And he should have just just fucking just. But hey, but that's that. I don't have no place to live but off my woman. Look, man, stop depending upon the so-called black woman like that, man. If you can't go get you a damn. Hey, I mean, because Jake be doing all kinds of shit other than getting up trying to find somewhere to work, man. Go find you a damn job. Get your own place. And there ain't nothing with hooking up. Hey, we, 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 can, we, we can be apart and still be together. But I need my own space because a person like this, it's nothing for them to kick you out in the dead of winter, man. Come on, man. Let's get, let's get the rest before I go into the, um, the curses here. It says, pro, okay, it says, prosecutors say Golden knocked the plate out of Sydney's hands and he pushed her down on the counter. After Sydney's uncle separated the two, Golden grabbed the knife and got past the uncle. See, she's still pissed. And stabbed Sydney in the leg in, in a bedroom. So she done made it all the way to the point up. So he's, of course, not eating, of course, because she, she knocked the fucking plate out of his hand. But you still so mad that you would grab a knife and go and stab the man? It says Sydney suffered a wound to his femoral artery, causing him to die at a local hospital. Damn shame over a plate of fucking food, man, in a microwave. She didn't mean to kill anyone, Ellis told the Chicago. That bitch had a knife. They're not looking at that. They're not going to look at that. She had a knife. She stabbed someone. He died. They're about to give her time, man. And the best thing that grandmama can do right here is, is see if she, you know, if she can get that baby immediately. 
You see? It says, she's broke up about it. She didn't know you could kill someone by stabbing them in the leg. Hey, well, that's too, too bad on dummy, man. Because you got arteries all through your body, man. You can hit one of them and, and, and your ass can bleed out like it's nothing, man. It says she just wanted him to leave because he was acting out. So how the fuck is he about to leave and you stabbing him in the leg? He need his legs to walk away. And she was worried about hurting the baby. Oh, you really hurt the baby now? The daddy gone? Your ass going to jail? <laughs> and he wouldn't go. Without knowing that Sydney's injuries were fatal, Golden returned to the apartment hours after the stabbing and was arrested by police officers. So she ain't even trying to see what's the nigga all right. She gone. She done came back later, probably after, you know, going and getting her some breakfast somewhere since she was so goddamn hungry. Golden's attorney, Julie Kohler, said that Golden spent four days in the hospital from injuries imposed by Sydney. Yeah, that's probably something that they recommended for her because she was able to leave the house, wasn't she? She didn't go to the hospital. She wasn't hurt to the point of going to the hospital. She came back to the apartment. And you know those, you know, and that sounds like one of those, those, those small hat, um, Lawyers too, you know, they'll give you all kinds of advice how to um, trick people and get around shit Yeah, you go in the hospital and you just you know, you stay for a few that that's gonna help our case <laughs> That's how they get down it says Without knowing that city in injuries were fatal going to return to your apartment hours after the stabbing or was arrested by police officers Prosecutors say golden admitted to stabbing her boyfriend Golden's attorney, Julie Kohler, said that Golden spent four days in the hospital from injuries imposed by Sydney. She received a two million dollar bond. That's a lot of money, though, man. Which means she might have to give birth to her baby in jail, Kohler said. To not only force Keisha to give birth in jail, but then to immediately take her child away after birth is cruel to the mother and the baby. Wait, hey, this is America. And we're under those curses. And these so-called white people, they don't give a fuck. Because they would make a way for a so-called white woman to be with her child. <laughs> you best believe that. They, 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 they'll give her time. They'll, they'll prolong the damn trial for six, seven months. Give her a year to, you know, to, you know, to, to, to nurse her baby and all that shit before they throw her ass in jail. But you, Jake, you'll throw your ass right in jail, let you have a baby in the fucking jail, and then take the baby from your ass. Why you chained up to a damn bed. Okay. It says um, this heartless decision is contrary to Illinois law. All the evidence shows Keisha acted in self-defense. No, she blew. The, the story just says she blew past her uncle. She ran past. She got by her uncle. Where's the self-defense in that? This guy's in the bedroom. You done blew past your uncle and stabbed the man. Where's the self-defense in that? The shit was over with. You done slapped the damn plate on the ground. That shit was over with. Now, if this story is true and she just ran past him, she finally struggled past her uncle with the damn knife and stabbed the man. That's not self-defense. She's going to jail. That's murder, man. That's not self-defense. Not from what this story is saying, unless they got some some details wrong. <laughs> it says the only person she's ever shown any violence towards was the man that was beating her. Well, there you have it. OK, but anyway. Over a damn microwavable plate, man. Microwavable plate. Jake threw in this place, man. That, this is why we need our Lord. This is why we need out of here, man. This is why we need. This is this is the results of 500 years of, of, of being under the white man's rule. That you can't get nothing but this type of destructiveness, man. This is how destructive this man's kingdom is. We need out of here. But like I said again, we're under the curses of this Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now, here's one of those curses. Let's just get straight to it. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 54, is it? Or 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil towards the husband of her bosom. Because that was her husband. They can call it boyfriend all the fuck they want. You see what I'm saying? That was her husband, man, because sex constitutes marriage. 
It's not no damn getting on bended knee and offering no chick no damn ring, man. And letting some white man tell you, I, now I pronounce you man and wife. Well, you No, that's not scriptural. Okay, it says, the tender and delicate woman among you which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness her eyes shall be evil towards the husband the husband of her bosom and towards her son and towards her daughter you see our women were so delicate man they would just basically float man they the goddamn levitate <laughs> they ain't even want to put their feet on the ground little pretty ass toes now the nigga women out here doing drive-bys and shooting at niggas and stabbing niggas and all into um damn bar brow <laughs> bar bras and all kinds of shit, man. Cause this could have been easily avoided. As a matter of fact, let me get verse 54 because this goes towards him too. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother. And that's where you get, you know, when my man's got shot, your, your boy take off. Hey. That, that's even his torses. But this is how you know who the children of Israel are, because these curses fit us. Come on, man. I mean, damn, wake up, Jacob, man. Y'all got to wake up out here. We're in these last days, man. It says so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and towards the wife of his bosom and towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. And he literally spiritually and physically has left that child. And you know that this fits the so-called blacks to a T. The so-called black man is not in the homes of a lot of these relationships, man, when it comes to, um, um, you know, being with the so-called black woman because it's just so goddamn, it's, it's, it's so hard to do, man, in a lot of cases. It really is, you know? So these are two curses that we just read off going towards our men and towards our women because one of them should have had sense enough to say, because uh, the mama is like, oh, they love each other. No, if one, if they loved each other, they'd have been fighting over who was going to really use the microwave first for, you know, out of love. No, baby, you go first. 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 Not fighting over this motherfucker went first and you so mad you slap a plate out of his hand. <laughs> nah, man, that's not love right there. Love is not the police being called to your apartment five times within four months. And, and one of them is from you stabbing him in the fucking neck where he had to go to the hospital to begin with. And that nigga should have knew. <laughs> hey, that should have been his cue. Hey, look, I'm going to have to get away from her. But you go back and this bitch stab you again. How many times you going to allow somebody to stab you before you know that it's time to get the fuck away from him, man? Wisdom, man. Wisdom goes a long ways. But just a, just one or two of these scriptures, just one scripture, man, could have saved that whole thing. Now, her ass is probably possibly about to go to jail for life. They're going to give her some nice time. If they give you two billion, I mean, two million dollars, a two million dollar bond. That means that hey, they planning on holding you for quite some time if they find your ass guilty, which she's guilty if this story is true. Because like I said again, if she got past her uncle like how they said she did and she done went to a whole another room and stabbed the nigga, he ain't even near her. It's not like she, he's got her up around the neck, you know, and he's smacking on her and shit like that. No, you went to this man and stabbed him and then left the apartment, you know, ain't called no motherfucking medical help. You see what I'm saying? You just left the apartment. You come back hours later to find out that the nigga done died in the hospital. Where's the love in that, man? But hey, like I said again, man, we are the children of Israel. As a matter of fact, let me get verse 46 right here because it shows you that these particular curses would be on us for a sign and a wonder. You don't hear about this, this type of stuff like that really. It happens amongst, don't get me wrong, it happens amongst the other nations. It's other nations that do weird shit and crazy shit. But it's not on them to kill their people like how it's on us, man. This is one of those curses. Deuteronomy 28 and 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So these 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 curses are on, a, on us as a, a banner, man. It's on us as a banner. It's like going to the Gucci store. You know when you get to the Gucci store because you see Gucci on the top of the building. 
you know that 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 lettering they have that that trademark that branded lettering well you know that's the gucci store that's the official store right there i know i can go in there and i can get an official gucci bag or whatever the hell you know what i'm saying because that's the sign on it and those signs are on us as a people you can look at a nigga and be like those are the children of israel because those niggas are wicked as hell they are under the curses of deuteronomy chapter 28 so with that i pray that this lesson was edifying